It's Just for Laughs, the Montreal International Comedy Festival, featuring Bob Marley, Danny Boy, Maria Bamford, Patrice O'Neill, John Wing, Jim Brewer, and more. So take your seat in the front row. It's the world's top comedians at the Montreal International Comedy Festival. It's Just for Laughs, just for Paramount. Here's Simon Evans. Very nice to be here. A couple of things I'll dispense with uh, very briefly. Firstly, my accent, which I hope won't cause too much trouble this evening. I don't flatter myself that any of you will genuinely find it sexy. Uh, but uh, if you're struggling to place it precisely, uh, it is, in fact, educated. Um, <laughs> oh, one, one or two boos, but nothing flying through the air. That's good. I, uh, I did use that line once in Edinburgh, in Scotland, and uh, they were fine about it at first. Uh, one of them got it, passed it round, things turned a bit ugly. So, um, <laughs> also I hear I was back in the hotel by then, to be honest, but... Uh, <laughs> that's the sort of level I work on, and... Uh, <laughs> I hope you can enjoy that. And finally, uh, by now, a few people are usually thinking this is all very well, but where are his eyes? <laughs> OK, I'll take that as a yes. I, uh, I do have eyes. I can open them slightly. Uh, they are fully functioning eyes. I can see out. That's the point. Uh, <laughs> Anything else is just ornament, really, isn't it? So, uh, and I have heard most of the insults. I'd heard most of them by the time I was about eight years old, I think. Uh, piggy little eyes, weasel eyes, uh, seen bigger eyes on a potato. <laughs> Mother could be very cruel. <laughs> Still, she's in a home now, so... Uh, somewhere. And, uh, no, I'm unkind to her. She's a very generous woman, actually, my mother. We get on well. She, she gives me uh, generous gifts, inappropriate ones, I have to say. I uh, recently received a diver's watch for my birthday, which I have no idea what possessed her. It's a ridiculous thing you've seen. It's a great chunky thing covered in dials, good for up to 100 metres of water pressure. It's got a shark-resistant strap. Which, I have to say, I'm no expert, but I think if all he wants is your watch, it's probably best to let him have it, really, is it? <laughs> it may work, it may fool the shark, I have no idea, but the thing is, I, I don't know how to explain to my mother the only kind of diving I ever do is... ...considered very bad manners to check your watch, frankly. <laughs> uh, I must admit the luminous dial has come in handy, but still, uh, it's... Uh... If I ever find one 100 metres deep, I'm getting out of there. I can tell you, that's... Uh, <laughs> even in feet and yards, that's a bit beyond the call, isn't it, I think? <laughs> so a couple of amusing things happened to me, uh, fortunately, just before I left uh, to come over to Canada. I, I was packing some things up. I found a letter from an old girlfriend. said on it, Dear Simon, I'm leaving you. Uh, you anally retentive asshole." <laughs> Which I found funny in itself, to be honest. Anally retentive asshole. I mean, if there's one thing you want to be anally retentive, it would be your asshole, wouldn't it? Do you think? <laughs> You might say the entire purpose, really, of an asshole is to retain, you know, <laughs> anally. <laughs> At least until the time is right, you know. <laughs> control, that's the key. But uh, apart from that, she hadn't dated this letter, which was typical of her, frankly. When I let that pass, I'd uh, filled it in for her, as usual. Uh, <laughs> filed it under R for rejection, correspondence files, brackets, romance. So far, so good. Wasn't until I pulled it out again, I realised after all this time, she'd failed to hyphenate anally retentive. <laughs> I know, so I had the last laugh after all. I, uh... <laughs> we were always arguing, actually. I said as much to her one time. She said, well, you, we'd have less arguments if you wouldn't pick me up on every little thing. I said to her, fewer arguments. <laughs> oh, yes. Two nil to me, I think. And lost you. Excellent. I, um... <laughs> but the other thing I wanted to talk to you about, I, I was talking to an old neighbour of mine, uh, lives next door, Stan, 86 years old, can't get out much, uh, has his hobbies, he's a, he's a keen racist. <laughs> he uh, <laughs> refers to family a couple of doors down from me as the darkies, which is awkward, obviously. 
especially considering they're Welsh. <laughs> Stan doesn't trust the Welsh or their spicy food. Uh, yeah. We were talking about the ongoing conflict in Iraq. I was expressing the opinion, I think quite popular in Canada, that Britain was a little bit too eager to follow America's agenda in that part of the world. And Stan said, well, you've got to remember, we do owe the Yanks, you know. If it hadn't been for the Yanks back in World War II, we'd all be speaking German. No, I'm sorry, I don't believe that. I've heard it enough times and I refute it. I've seen the British and their knack for foreign languages. <laughs> I don't think we'd have the hang of it yet, I'm sorry. I think we'd still be speaking English, just loudly and slowly. <laughs> this whole war in Iraq thing has gone on long enough. It's a lot of nonsense. Tony Blair has certainly now admitted that there are no weapons of mass destruction. I don't wish to appear wise in hindsight, but it seemed obvious to me if Saddam Hussein did have weapons of mass destruction, you would think a war would be the perfect opportunity to use them. <laughs> I always felt that point was glossed over somewhat at the time, you know, especially a war with America. I mean, what else are you waiting for? What is it, a bit like the best China? You never know quite when to get it out? <laughs> yeah. Oh, America are coming to war. Shall we use the weapons of mass destruction? No, let's save them for a special occasion. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to fritter them away on this little fracas, do we? <laughs> But I don't want us to all get too smug, you know, we all went to the demos. What about these people who drove hundreds of miles to go to demos and march around shouting no war for oil and then drove home again and didn't see the irony of the whole thing, so... <laughs> We're all to blame, people. That's my message. Thanks very much for listening. I've been Simon Evans. I'll see you again. Good night. Hello, Canada. How you guys doing? All right? I'm so happy to be, I've had such a great week here, so much fun. I'm, I'm married now, 11 years, I've been married for 11 years. My wife is so good to me, she does everything for me. I don't even know who I am, I don't know what I am without her. I don't even know where my socks are unless I ask my wife. I'm like, where are my socks? They're in the sock drawer. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's time to go to bed. Okay. <laughs> That's not your side. Okay. <laughs> it's time to eat. Okay. <laughs> Can I have some bread? You don't like bread. Okay. <laughs> you know what's great about being married? Sometimes food will just show up. I'll just be watching TV and like, she brought me a bowl of chips and dip the other day. And she's like, this will hold you over, you fat little bastard. <laughs> I was like, thank you. <laughs> oh, I love the chips and dip. You're every, it's like crack, isn't it? The minute it's placed before me, I hear nothing anybody else says. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> Everybody's voice is just like rah, 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 rah. <laughs> You know what's great married food? It's pizza. Do you ever be sitting around with your spouse and you look at each other? What? 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 I didn't say anything because I didn't think he wanted to do it, but we're gonna get a pizza! <laughs> Woo! I love you! <laughs> First thing I do after I order the pizza, I take off all my clothes. That way, I don't have to answer the door when the pizza guy shows up. <laughs> then I sit on the couch and I wait for my pizza. <laughs> Do you ever notice from the time you hang up the phone until the time the pizza guy shows up, the only conversation you have is, where in the hell is our pizza? <laughs> That's pretty bad, isn't it? People starving to death all around the world. People waiting for a bag of flour to fall out of a helicopter. I'm sitting on the couch, scratching my nuts, going, this is ridiculous! <laughs> you know how many beers I've had to drink while I wait for this kid to show up? <laughs> it's great when he shows up, isn't it? It's so exciting. It's almost like a drug raid. <laughs> Ding dong, he's here! Hide the dog! 
my wife tried to put me on a diet. I was gaining a couple pounds. Here's what happened. We were going on vacation. I didn't even know we were going on vacation. Then she came home with some bathing suits to me to try on. I've never tried on a bathing suit. So I get in the bathroom. I could barely get them past my kneecaps. And she's yelling at me, come out and let me see them. <laughs> they don't fit. How do you know they don't fit? Because my testicles are hanging over the top. <laughs> Pretty good sign if the old testicles are hanging on the outside of the fabric. <laughs> Just come out and let me see. <laughs> so I suck in my gut a little bit. And I flex as best I can. I know it's tempting, ladies, I know. <laughs> I come out around the corner to show my wife the bathing suit. Right now, we're married, we sleep together. She picked me. <laughs> she looks at me with a suit on. This is what she does, ready? This is what she does. Oh. <laughs> what the hell is that? What is, oh. <laughs> Guys, let me ask you a question. You think you can get away with doing that to the wife? Imagine she's in the bathroom trying on a bathing suit. She comes skipping out. <laughs> You're like, whoa! I just squeeze your bucket into that piece of nylon. Your stuff would be packed in the truck, ready to go. You'd be chilling at the Holiday Inn. She looks at me, she goes, you have gained some weight. And I was like, okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm gonna put you on a diet. I'm gonna put you on a low carbohydrate diet. It's called the Atkins diet. And all you're gonna eat is just meat. And I was like, okay, thank you, good. <laughs> I thought I'd like it, right? Till three days into it, I'd eaten so much meat, I was perusing the neighborhood at four in the morning looking for cats. <laughs> I only made it 11 days, I had to quit. I was backed up like the mall parking lot at Christmas time. <laughs> I told my wife, I said, I think I'm gonna die. <laughs> oh, that's ridiculous, you're not gonna die. Well, I gotta have a piece of fruit or something. <laughs> well, fruit is not on the diet. Well, guess what? It's on my life plan, Nazi. <laughs> I'm gonna eat this apple. I don't know what's gonna happen, but trust me when I tell you something's gonna happen. <laughs> you get the kids, load them in the truck and get out of town. <laughs> sure enough, three bites into that Macintosh, my, my stomach was like, then I felt that sharp pain. Did you ever feel that one? <laughs> I ran as fast as I could. <laughs> I barely made it in there. I got in there. I was making noises that should not come out of a human being. <laughs> it started off peaceful, but it got ugly real quick. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through it, this is what I heard. <laughs> what the hell's that? I got a damn duck flying out of me. Oh my God. I open up the door and my five-year-old's like, Daddy, can I feed the ducks? No. Hey, thank you guys very much. Thanks for coming out. Coming up. This would be an Irish person. Diddly-dee, potatoes. Did you hear that? Did you hear it? Danny boy. Did you hear it? 